evolution of SharePoint. On this slide, I have just listed the various versions that have released across the years because SharePoint at every release it changes its face. Okay, every product of SharePoint, if you look at it, the content, the uh, it has many more point, uh, features added to it, right? So it has grown bigger and bigger during its evolution, starting from 2001 when it was released as a web portal product, right? If an organization wants an intranet and an extranet or an internet, basically, you could use SharePoint to host your contents for the web, internal websites, things like that. It was a very basic product came from a product which have which Microsoft had earlier called content management server right that that's a predecessor to SharePoint basically content management server was revamped as SharePoint portal server 2001 it was a minor uh, success people was very reluctant to go into 2001 uh, because it's the first product coming in then we had SharePoint 2003 where the same features of portal capabilities were kept portal when I say you uh, typically, I believe you all understand that portals are typically websites. It could be an intranet or an internet facing or an extranet for business users. Okay. In SharePoint 2003, right, the next version which was released, uh, the capabilities of collaboration, right, the users using the intranet within the organization to collaborate on document sharings and things like that, features were introduced. 2007, Web content management was introduced into the portal, and we had the portal and collaboration, and web content management came in into the 2007 version. Plus, the architecture of the product changed, right? The architecture, the product itself, and the core itself was developed using .NET framework technologies, okay? And from Office SharePoint 2007. You could see the name also has a very uh, my minor changes because the vision for the product from Microsoft also has changed across the years. Initially they want what they thought about SharePoint as more and more uh, organizations adopted SharePoint. The vision also changed, the requirements came in, they modified the product to suit those requirements and it kept growing. The, field, the functionalities of the product get, kept growing. When we move further in the next slides, we'll see what where it stands today as a product and what are the capabilities uh, at this point of time. So uh, at the version of 2007, Right, the, the major change was the re-architecture, saying that the core engine was changed using the .NET framework. Then we had SharePoint Server 2010, and now we moved on to SharePoint Server 2013. Right, when you when at the current stage, what the major change you will feel in SharePoint, people who have been working in SharePoint or new to SharePoint, right, is that <coughs> SharePoint supports every open standards out there. Development in SharePoint has become very fine. Right? You don't have to be, as a developer, the first question is how much do I need to learn? You, your learning curve is very much minimized, right? Because it's, even though it's done on .NET framework platform, right? You could use your Java's and the other core technologies to work in SharePoint very easily because when we move to the programming model slides later, I'll explain to you how that has come in. So it's become more of an open standard platform today. That's what uh, SharePoint 2013, which feature lists are. So I hope you got a good idea over the evolution patterns of SharePoint across the years. Right, start as a very simple portal product, and let's see where we are at today. Right. Now let's start from a developer's point of view. If you have to take up SharePoint development, right, what is your first learning point to start with? These are the programming models that SharePoint supports for its own customization and creating components and applications and things like. That. You have SharePoint server object model, .NET framework client object model, your JavaScript client object model, REST or data endpoints, represent, representational state transfer. Uh, people who have heard of REST, right? REST is an open standard, basically. It's not uh, linked to any particular vendor. It's a software architecture guidelines for basically creating web services on the internet and the protocol used to when you use rest programming because every programming language has some way to create update delete with the crude methodology it uses or data protocol okay so rest and or data which is a complete open standard all right and then is supported you have silverlight client object model Silverlight mobile object model, which because SharePoint 2013 supports mobile devices out of the box, F complete support. Just it treats mobile devices as if it's a native client, not as something special. So you have specifically mobile 
uh, device object model is there to create. You have Silverlight client object model, and again Windows PowerShell. So as you can choose to use any of these because if you are not from, if you are basically not even from .NET platform development background, okay, you have you are a Java person, right? You could use your Java skills to directly use the Java client object model because capabilities of all these, basically the first three, right? The so SharePoint server is basically based on .NET languages and .NET framework, and .NET client object model again, as I told you, is based on dot uh, is based on .NET, but JSOM has equivalent capabilities. You can create your apps in SharePoint. You can customize code and everything using Java. You don't have to learn a new syntax or anything like that. All, the only learning curve for you is to learn the object model, right? If you, if you know the server object model, which is the first point on that slide, SharePoint server object model. Let me just show you a quick uh, view of server object model here. This encapsulates almost the high level aspects of all the libraries in the object model that you need to learn. You have a core library called SP Farm, which is a SharePoint farm, which will include all the servers, all the web applications, everything cycle created inside SharePoint called SP Farm. You have SP Service, three equivalent layers under that SP Service application, SP Web application. Under that, you have SP Site, SP Web, SP List. This is the object model as a programmer. Once you understand and start learning SharePoint, you will understand that everything you see is a list. At this uh, rock bottom of this uh, particular breakdown, you have SP list. List is where you have, because you go to any page on, a, uh, on the web, you'll have some listings coming up, right? It could be product listing or some tracking, conversations, anything. It's list. And list appears in a web. And web is basically a, a subsite which comes in a site and site goes to a larger, which is a web application. Then you have supporting services like workflows and everything over there, and you and everything belongs to an SP farm. So it's hierarchically very simple to learn this, but once you learn this object model, you the technology you can work on these is what I was showing you in the previous slide, right? Once you learn this object model, the programming technologies could be SOM, CSOM, JSOM if you uh, want to call abbreviated versions. Basically, you can use Java, you can use .NET, you can use an open standard like REST, and any any programming language which supports REST programming you could use. It completely supports the Silverlight model for mobile as well as client. When you say client object model, you don't have, you uh, don't think that you you there's something lacking in these object models, okay? Because whatever code you write using a client object models, when you pass this code onto the server, the server converts it to server code and executes them. So almost all capabilities of the server code is there in this client object model. It's about you choosing which object model that you can develop SharePoint using, right? So these are basically that. So the learning curve, as I told you, because ideally the developers come from a particular background. So if your background is .NET, it's a straight line for you to come into SharePoint. If it's Java, it's again a straight line for you, OK? <clears throat> OK, I have a question from one of our participants. Uh, metadata management, do you mean big data? No, it's uh, two different things. Big data is a current uh, hype term out there, which basically means uh, data which is not in relational format, not in structured cases, but spread across multiple hard disks. But you, have, you use languages to query that. So that's a different way, like how Twitter stores data. They don't store data into a uh, typical relational database. They store into a big data format, right, across multiple hard disks. That's a different discussion. But metadata is not that. Metadata is a very generic term in data manipulation, which means data about data. Because if you have a document, the document will have some metadata, like who created it, what is the purpose of the document, what is the ex expiration date, what is the creation date, things like that. It's so data about data, OK? I'll just answer one question, one of the participants short. Meanwhile, so being on this slide as developers, that's what something I want to uh, stress again, okay? Because I, the objective of be delivering this webinar for you is to make you comfortable to feel that your learning curve to SharePoint. Even though SharePoint has many functionalities out there, you don't have to take all of them at once, okay? It's step by step. If you learn SharePoint from the approach which is shown as a developer, you always learn products from its object model, right? You don't go to learn products from uh, top down. Typically, developers go from bottoms up approach, right? You go to the core object model, object models here. And these terms are very straightforward. A farm means multiple SharePoint servers and all the functionalities together. It means basically one organization will have a top farm. Under the farm, you have many web applications. In each web application, you'll have multiple websites, which department level, okay? You'll have department level websites under which you'll have uh, 
theme uh, like uh, context based sites in which you'll have user level sites and each site will be displaying something any display onto a web page is basically an sp list a list that's a kind of object term over there you break it down like this once you know the object model you could use any of those other project uh, you could use any of the other programming models to work on sharepoint straight away okay now object model comparison so we discussed about the various object model that programmers can use, right? You you talked about dot uh, server based dot net, Java, REST, or data endpoints. You could use all that. Silverlight. Such a quick comparison. It's very self-descriptive. This slide. You could just uh, look at the points here. Each of them. Object-oriented programming. Yes, because most uh, they only know object-oriented program because all programming languages out there use that. But you can see the REST or data, which is an open standard. It's not object-oriented. It's resource-oriented. You could read more about that on the internet, but it's not an object-oriented uh, programming language. There's a lot of arguments on that because the code typically looks like object-oriented, but the term, it's a resource-oriented programming language. Okay, REST or data is resource-oriented. The other, uh, Java, naturally, and uh, .NET are object-oriented languages. Batch processing, because code from the client, when you, when you create your applications within SharePoint, you run custom applications and make them work, you could decide whether you want batch processing for the code or asynchronous like the entire code has to be processed at once like performance tuning options and many other options you can see there availability of link right link again is language integrated query which is a, a dot net uh, facility by which uh, the programming language syntax itself includes the query language right when you want to query your backends like SQL Server and Oracle you could use uh, programming language syntax instead of going for like SQL same like select stuff from this table where like that you could use programming language syntax it's a that's link it was released around uh, uh, five six years back in Visual Studio 2008 I believe from there we have dotnet from version 3 I believe we have link option in dotnet as you can see it's not available in JavaScript and, well, because you could because you, instead of using link you could directly use SQL syntax in Java so it's, it's not that there is something which you cannot do always it's just a comparison show you what what possibilities and what is not and uh, you can just read the points combining list data yes familiarity one major uh, constraint is there for Java Java based uh, models right you could not you, you cannot combine content data you could or search content data from different multiple web applications on the server using JavaScript client-side model but again you have work around for that so don't worry this is a high-level diagram which says no but as a programmer, we always find workarounds for that. Yes, we have options. But basically, at the end of the day, my point to use at summarized point is that even if you're in .NET or Java or any other programming language and you're familiar with any of these, because these are the core topic programming languages you have .NET, you have Java, you have open source like REST, then, then it's all programming syntax because .NET supports around 13, 14 uh, primary programming language syntaxes. Okay, So when I say .NET, don't think it's only VB, .NET, and C Sharp. Okay, in .NET itself, we have 14 language syntaxes supported. Okay, so uh, coming on to that. This slide again for developers, right? Because when SharePoint is implemented in an organization, your job as a developer will be either customize existing options or create organization need-based applications in SharePoint, which works on top of SharePoint, right? You can create three types of applications. You can have sandbox applications, something called apps in SharePoint or farm solutions. Now let me tell you, sandbox is a term you have, I believe most of you have heard sandboxed applications, right? In Windows you heard old applications runs in a sandboxed environment, okay? Sandbox environment was released in SharePoint 2010 basically, so that your custom application, because the, the major difficulty that Microsoft faced when they exposed SharePoint development was to create many applications on SharePoint and host it onto SharePoint engine and uh, most of the time these applications are not well prepared means what the developer uh, either knowledge level wise or otherwise right the application creates performs badly because you host an application into SharePoint it runs in process with SharePoint if that application goes bad you can actually bring bring down your portal right so sandbox is an area where it's running within SharePoint but in a controlled environment so that even if your application your custom application behaves badly it doesn't affect the overall of the server application but 
as you can see in SharePoint 2013, sandbox solutions like previous version applications when you bring in, it's uh, <coughs> deprecated. Basically, it, it will not be carried forward in the next version. So ideally because for the stability of the product, right? Because today what we have is apps creation. SharePoint apps is basically applications, okay? If you want to create your own standalone applications in SharePoint, apps is the ideal way to go ahead because <coughs> Apps could be hosted in any third-party environment. You could host your app, apps in your Unix environment, but still view and run it from SharePoint. That's what the facilities of apps can be hosted anyway, right? We'll, we have a topic on apps coming uh, shortly in a couple of slides. I'll explain to you that. So the decision point today in SharePoint 13, uh, SharePoint 2013, is either create whether when when you have a development requirement, do we need to create an app? or we need to create a farm solution. Farm solution is a native solution done in SharePoint, hosted in SharePoint. There are only a couple of points you can see here in the first uh, section of the farm solution. There are only a couple of things you cannot do with an app. All right? Apps cannot call server-side code, like native server-side code you cannot access. Cannot uh, access SharePoint comes not on the same site. Apps cannot communicate with each other because two apps to communicate with each other. You need to create third party layers otherwise. Okay, there's again programming ways to do that, but typically apps do not communicate with each other. If you want to interact to applications, two applications working within SharePoint, all custom applications, but they want to share data between each other, you cannot go for an app as of now. So custom themes and things like these are like very few options which cannot be done using an app. You have to go for a native solution in SharePoint like farm solution that's called. The native applications are called farm solutions and any customized logic or custom applications create as apps. So three application creation options for you in SharePoint. Sandbox solutions which again is deprecated so it won't be carried forward to the next versions. You have to, uh, if, you have, you have, if you have custom applications running in SharePoint 2010, when you migrate them to 2013, either you convert them to apps or you have to run them in the sandbox environment. Okay three options here. Slide is very self-explanatory uh, on many points. The next slide here. <clears throat> Again, a comparison between them. Safety level, performance level, running cross-domain. We have a point here called should IT pros worry over it, okay? Because IT pros means not the developers, the administrators, because you could develop the applications and give on to the server to host them. So sandbox solutions, no, because they have their own limited authority anyway. So crashing or any uh, bad syntaxes happening within the sandboxes won't affect the share, uh, SharePoint box as such. Uh, apps, apps are able to do a lot via CSOM. There are some uncertainties concerning safety of running on a page with other apps, right? So because it's a new technology, definitely there's a lot of need to be done. Farm solutions are the best because they are type safe, because they are, they are server-side code running within SharePoint. So uh, today, when we deploy the solution, SharePoint itself has an internal checking mechanism by which each parameter output put of the solution is checked so that the SharePoint product, the hosting solution itself makes sure that the uh, performance and other aspects are not impacted. So a lot of points on that. So this is. Uh, these two slides I have basically come uh, put here for you to understand that there's a choice when you need as a developer to look at creating applications. But today, going further, <coughs> sorry, one second, let me come back to the slide. Okay, I have a request from one of the participants to explain about resource throttling. throttling. Resource throttling is basically controlling the impact of the farm, right? How much resources will your particular application take, right? So resource throttling, you can see sandbox application runs under advanced resource management system that allows resource point allocation automatic shutdown for troubles. Because that's what is a sandbox environment meant for. Untrusted applications or application which hasn't passed quality test, right, but you need to be running on SharePoint for some reason, you you put them to a sandbox environment is a controlled environment. You mean, you, I believe you understand what a controlled environment means, right? Because whatever happens in that particular environment will not affect the core system, right? Even if that application crashes also, nothing happens to your core SharePoint system, 
right? But again, performance will be affected because sandbox environment performance is not great, right? Because it's it is it's only allowed resource, limited resource points, okay? Apps, you can see as a resource throttling, apps run isolated from SharePoint farm. Our apps are hosted to third party, okay? It could be hosted on a Linux server somewhere else, but linked on your web page. So, so it's for the user, they won't feel any difference. They'll see an application running when they open the portal, walk around with it, there's absolutely no issues. But the, the actual physical place it's running could be a third party environment or even from the cloud, right? It could be hosted from a cloud environment. But again, as, as I say, if you use client object model programming in apps, right, the client code will be sent to the server for manipulation. So again, uh, code leveraging and uh, optimization is always required. Farm solutions, if not, and the third third of them, the farm solution, which is a native solution of SharePoint, if they're not done and tested in the right way, it could be directly impacting the entire farm. So. Just a quick look here on the client support level. Means what? As a client browser, right? What 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 is supported in SharePoint 2013? You could see the, the slide is very uh, self-explanatory. Uh, uh, older browsers like Internet Explorer 7 and 6, 6 and 7 are not supported, but the latest ones, right? Which 8, 9, 10, 11, all these are supported as a client for SharePoint as well as mobile devices, right? It supports mobile devices natively, right? You don't have to specify any specific uh, customization options or anything like that. The content pages, the web applications, sites you create in SharePoint, they're directly compatible across mobile devices. Plus, specifically for mobile device, you have many more options you can further customize. By default, it's compatible, okay? Client supports. From a developer's point of view, the core tools that on to uh, doing custom solutions on SharePoint, you have Visual Studio 2012 and 13 both versions, 2012 version to the 2013 version of Visual Studio, which you can use to create custom application, you can create apps, workflows, custom themes, uh, almost anything on SharePoint, because SharePoint needs are basically customizing the pages which comes up, creating new custom lists and things like that. Plus, you have a new tool which is free. Visual Studio, as you know, it's not free, it's a licensed product from Microsoft, but you have SharePoint Designer, which works and feels very much if you, come, if you ever have worked with the uh, front page of my Office front page, it's very similar to that. It's all drag drop HTML tool, okay? You can create excellent workflows, okay? SharePoint Designer is a very powerful, it's a free tool, okay? To work on SharePoint. SharePoint Designer and Visio 2013. Visio 2013 on SharePoint is specifically to work with the workflow engine. You create custom workflows and things like that in Visio. And all these are interchangeable. You could, you could do a workflow in Visio at the initial level, then import that into Visual Studio and customize it further. Same with SharePoint design also. So these are the primary tools that we use to work on uh, SharePoint. Plus, as developers using working on SharePoint when you get into it, you have many other tools available free, right? Because as your development gets more advanced for testing, these are all like Ajax Control Toolkit, Silverlight Toolkit, Developer Dashboard, these are all free tools for as developers, you could uh, use all of them because these are all comes on the side, okay? When we want to work on. Okay. You have a look through that because CLR profilers, color palette tools, right? For designing, you know, creating uh, various colors and themes and things like that. These are all free tools available for working on SharePoint. Model on SharePoint that can be used to work on uh, many other uh, .NET projects as you wish. Okay, but the core tools what we use, as we saw in the previous slide, is uh, Visual Studio, either 2012 or 2013, SharePoint Designer, and Visio for the workflows. Okay. Next, we have a quick topic to discuss about apps. Okay, I have a request from a participant. Uh, can you explain state machine workflow in SharePoint Designer? Okay, uh, Himanshu, right? Okay, uh, SharePoint supports two main categories of workflow. One is uh, sequential and one is the state machine workflow, right? State machine workflow, the difference between sequential is that 
each step, when you create the workflow, each step has to complete with a flag so the next step executes. In state machine workflow, it's not sequential, it's asynchronous. It means multiple steps in the workflow can execute together based on the state of that, like on completion, that's a state, right? On completion of document, on, on a particular time, after a particular time has elapsed. So you could create constraints like that. So the state of that particular artifact, in a workflow you can call it artifact, a particular artifact changes, <coughs> it works like that. So state machine, there's two different types of workflow. In the state machines, it's basically asynchronous, means multiple steps can execute at the same time, and that too not in a particular order, right? So when you have a business requirement, typically matching a state machine, we can do that. Yes, uh, Himanshu, your next question, can we create it through designer? SharePoint, of course you can. SharePoint designer can create sequential as well as state machine workflows. And it's very straightforward, believe me, because it's all declarative. And uh, Microsoft, over the years, right, because the product has been there for more than a decade now, uh, feedback has come in so that almost all possible business scenarios are there available as drag drop templates for you. Almost all. Although if it's not, you have custom action. You could create a custom action and put your just expressions inside that to go further with the coding level. So, uh, uh, Himanshu, yes, you can use uh, state machine workflow, create them using uh, design also. Okay. Coming up to the next slide here, uh, basic an explanation of what are apps. As I told you, the new term, a short form for application, are standalone or custom solutions for SharePoint runs entirely outside the SharePoint process, right? And creating an app, you could use any level of coding functionality. We learned all the programming functionalities earlier, but and you can host it separately. So you don't have to take up the SharePoint resources to run that particular app, right? The app could even be hosted from a cloud, okay? It's a framework for encapsulating functionality within a SharePoint site because when you look at a SharePoint site, you have many components running within it. Each component can be a different app. Each of those components can be running in a different environment also, right? It could be across the web or in your in your uh, organization environment itself on a separate platform or a separate server or things like that. So it's a completely free model. That's what basically the objective is. And the future of development on SharePoint is also app-based. Microsoft uh, recommends everybody moving on to apps, basically for a reason that it doesn't destabilize the server because it runs on a, on a different physical hardware. Right? So the core SharePoint settings and functionalities and resources are not utilized and uh, manipulated by these third-party applications. So it's an excellent functionality because it's, uh, it's based on uh, open standards, right? As I told you, the object models are there, but again, you have all the like uh, REST APIs or data or auth, or auth right? All, all these authorization protocols. There's a slide uh, which we have just for information's sake for you. The same features listed in a graphical format so that like what are apps is automation, integration, they are standalone and you can customize and extend them to any particular need that you want to do. So the way forward in SharePoint is, uh, development is basically either create your custom applications in as an app or farm solution. Farm solution runs natively within the server, so uh, further on administrators and people taking care of the SharePoint environment will be very reluctant to uh, create SharePoint functions unless it's very right, correctly and tightly made because it can directly affect the performance servers. All other applications and custom solutions you create, you create using apps. And app development, don't believe, don't I think it's very tough. It's very straightforward. You have templates available for almost all uh, scenarios to create them. Okay, or you can create it from scratch using open standards like REST. Okay. App hosting models. These are the various methods. If you have an application or an app of SharePoint created, to host it, right? Hosting it means you want to make it available for SharePoint environment, right? So these are three architecture approaches. There are three, three options in that. The first two are categorized as one, which is cloud-based apps, right? Cloud-based, you all understand what the term cloud is. It's a remote 
environment which uh, works according to the software as a service and infrastructure as a service, right? SSAs or SLAs, right? Infrastructure IAS, like infrastructure as a service and app so software as a service, right? These are cloud-based systems where the hardware, software, everything is hosted in, in a remote entity and you can just directly use the functionality across the web. You could host your applications externally on a cloud, right? It's provider-hosted or auto-hosted apps. Or your apps could be hosted locally within SharePoint itself, SharePoint-hosted apps, right? You create an isolated sub-web, right? That's the term. That's basically a step to create a sub-web and use that to host your uh, apps within SharePoint itself, okay? So provider-hosted or auto-hosted apps, like Windows Azure Clouds or any other cloud you could use for that. So 